Hi you guys, it is Alyssa and I am back. Um, I want to apologize again for my absence. I have just been really busy with personal readings and like I mentioned in uh, the post I made the other day, I can only do so many readings in a day uh, because it's just, I'm, I'm sure other readers know what I'm talking about, but like it gets to a point where, you know, if you do uh, too many in one day, it's like, oh my god, exhausting, uh, you know, headaches galore, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I've, I've been doing readings all day today, so this is probably going to be the last one that I do today. Um, but I was like, okay, I, I gotta get another video up for the channel because this is ridiculous. So, I, I posted a poll for you guys to choose um, which uh, subject, which reading you wanted to see first, and um, over half the votes went to, is my intuition correct about this connection? Is it the real deal? So, that's what we're doing today. As you can see, we have four options to choose from. Group one is orange calcite. I really like this one because it reminds me of a candy corn. Can you see it? Um, group two is going to be Dalmatian Jasper. Group three is Opalite. I really like this one too. It's very shiny. And group number four is going to be Bloodstone. Okay guys, so um, think about uh, your person, think about your connection, um, and then uh, just allow yourself to be drawn to um, a particular group. Um, I want you guys to know that I do have some of those uh, vloggish, chatty types of videos in the works. Um, Rose Bloom Readings, I, I, don't, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with her channel, but she uh, she's pretty good, so if you've never heard of her, you should check her out. Um, she posted a video recently um, introducing her spirit guides and also talking about, you know, different methods of communicating with your spirit guides, which I thought was really cool. And um, I actually had been thinking about doing a video similar to that, talking about you know, my own guides and the entities that I work with personally. Um, so that one is on the way at some point. Um, I'm also planning on doing, uh, talking to you guys a little bit about um, a particular technique that I learned recently from a friend. Um, it is a predictive uh, technique that you, you use um, with your tarot cards to kind of, you know, predict uh, the events of the coming day, uh, which is, it's really interesting, so I was thinking about talking to you guys about that and kind of explaining how it works and that kind of thing. So, that's just a couple of the ideas that I've got bouncing around in my head at this moment, and um, I'm pretty sure I have talked for too long, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start with group one. Okay guys, so let me move these other cards out of the way. Okay, group one, orange calcite. Let's see what your card is. We have the thinker. All right, and that is number 44. So that number may be significant to some of you guys. Um, I know it's pretty significant to me. Um, I see fours constantly, all the time, repeating fours. Um, to me, it reminds me of uh, Twin Flame stuff, so um, that's that's how I interpret it. Uh, but maybe some of you guys have other interpretations uh, for this for the number when you see it. Um, let me know in the comments. I'm, I'd be curious to hear. So um, the thinker, this card really is about um, strategy. It's about logic. Um, it's kind of like. Uh, 
it's you know it's 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 very similar uh, energy to like the swords cards in general. It's about you know not uh, getting super caught up in your emotions. It's about being able to look at something objectively um, and not being super attached to particular outcomes or anything like that. So I get the impression that you guys who picked this group actually um, right off the bat like. I, I, we haven't pulled any cards yet, but I want to say that you guys probably are correct about this connection that you're inquiring about simply because it seems to me like you guys are not really um, emotional about this person or this situation. It feels like most of you guys are able to look at this um, from a neutral standpoint, and it seems to me like you guys have really analyzed this situation and this connection um, to come to the conclusions that you have come to. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> I, I want to say yes, but we will see what other cards want to come out. Alright, so, let's see. Is your intuition about this connection correct? What deck do I want to use? Let's go with my uh, Santa Muerte Tarot. This is pretty much my go-to deck. Is Group 1's intuition about this connection correct? We have the Four of Cups. So the Four of Cups is about boredom. It's about apathy. It's about being uncertain. So there is definitely a sense of doubt here. You definitely are doubting yourselves, but that's why you're watching this video, because you want to know if your uh, <laughs> doubts have any merit. We have the Page of Wands. We have the Queen of Swords. Okay, let me get some clarifiers, please. There's the Knight of Wands. Let me put that there. Why is the Page of Wands here? King of Cups and let's see what this is the Ten of Wands okay so um you guys who picked this group it seems to me like this is a situation that has probably been ongoing for some time um I think that the thing that really is causing you to doubt whether this is legit or not is the fact that there has been such little movement happening. Okay, because right under the Four of Cups we have the Knight of Wands, which is about movement. You know, the Knight of Wands, especially Wands. Wands is very energetic, it's very passionate, it's very creative. Um, and you can see he's just kind of like riding forward, you know, with abandon. Um, so I think the thing that really is getting to you guys is, is the lack of, or the perceived lack of movement in this situation, okay? Um, this is a person that I definitely can tell that you feel very attached to. Um, the King of Cups is here under the Page of Wands. So, like, there's this, I mean, you know, there's that base attraction, that kind of thing. But there's also all of these really deep emotions that you feel towards this person. Um, kind of, it, it's kind of unexplainable. Like it's it's not like anything that you have experienced before, and that's that's what makes you really think like there's something different about this person. There's something different about what's going on here, um, because I've never I've never had this sort of attachment or bond to another person. Um, but, like I said, it feels like nothing has been happening. Um, there's distance here, okay? The Queen of Swords, uh, this, this energy is very distant, it's kind of icy. So you might not even have contact with this person, or not very much. Um, and that is sort of really, that's really weighing on you guys with the Ten of Wands. Because this card is about, you know, a burden. This card is about something that 
really is uh, getting you down, okay? Um, and I get the sense that because you're not seeing any progress being made, you are thinking, some of you are thinking about just setting this burden down and just walking away from it. However, I think that's proving to be difficult because there is this bond. There is this, this connection that's, that's so different, that's so strong. Um, so even those of you who have tried to let it go, um, I, I feel like you're having a really hard time doing that. Um, interesting, guys. Let's see what else wants to come out. Um, because we've got number 44 here, and, um, you know, there's all this, this energy of kind of like an, an unexplainable attachment or connection. I feel as if a lot of you guys are probably twin flames. You're dealing with a twin. Um, in which case, yes, your intuition about this connection is right. <laughs> there is something here. Um, I do feel like, though, a lot of you guys have tried to cut this off. You've tried to, like, cut this cord because for some of you, this has been going on for such a long time and you've not had, you've not seen any progress. And so you're like, forget it. Um, I am walking away from this and you've, you've tried to cut that cord. You've tried to cut this person's, uh, you, you've tried to sever that tie between you, but you know, it's, uh, it's not working. It hasn't worked. It just kind of regenerates, you know, as soon as you turn your back on it. Um, and I can tell you about that from experience. <laughs> um, so with the, uh, with the queen of wands here, it's, it's interesting. We have page knight and then the queen. So, um, let's see. The Queen of Wands, a lot of times I see her as kind of a, a witchy sort of figure. So some of you guys could be interested in that stuff. You could be uh, doing some of that stuff. We also have the moon here. The moon. So this is about things that are kind of unknown. Things that are sort of like esoteric, that kind of stuff. So that makes sense. Um, some of you maybe, I think I talked about this in another reading that I did recently. Or well, recently, like two weeks ago now, um, where we had the Queen of Wands and I mentioned um, some of you might have, you know, been doing some spell work or something, you know, pertaining to this situation. I feel like that's also the case here for some of you, for some of you. Um, some of you could be using that to try to um, let go of this, okay? Others of you are maybe trying to make it manifest, you know? Um, but whatever the case, I'm getting, you know, <laughs> whatever you guys are doing, you're not seeing the results that you're wanting to see, and that's very discouraging to you. Um, with the Five of Pentacles here, this is like, well, now what? What do I do? What am I supposed to do here? I'm walking on, I'm walking on eggshells or skulls, um, and... I, I don't know what to do about this because it, it, it like like nothing's happening um, and I'm just stuck feeling this connection to this person that basically doesn't have anything to do with me and I, that's very frustrating I get it um, so <sighs> you guys There's the King of Swords. There's more of that, I want this to be over with kind of energy. Um, there's definitely very strong feelings of frustration with this group, you guys. And I'm not, uh, I mean, I'm not judging you. I'm, it's totally understandable. I've, I've, I have felt the same way. Um, 
Here's the Hierophant. So this is about um, spirituality. This is about uh, institutions. This is about commitment, stability. So, you know, you guys want this situation to stabilize. You want this person to either get it together or fuck right off. Um, and for most of you, they have fucked right off in the physical sense. But, you know, their 5D presence is still bothering you. And, like, with a connection like this, because I feel like most of you guys are probably twin flames. With a connection like this, that's that's always going to be an issue, basically. I mean, you can't really hide, you can't really run from this sort of connection because it's like you're, you know, you're the same. You're the same being in two different bodies. So, you know, once you, um... Once you recognize your twin's presence, you're going to feel it all the time, basically. Um, and as soon as you start to forget about it, the universe is going to remind you, like, bitch, don't forget about this thing. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's really such bullshit. But, like, I don't know why that happens, but it does. Um, and it's just, again, it's just, it's something that you, you, you just can't run from, even though, even, even if you want to. Um, I know a lot of us, like, speaking from personal experience, I couldn't get away from my twin even before I met him in the, th in the 3D. So, you know, it's very frustrating, these situations. Um, let's see if there's anything else that wants to come up for you guys. I mean, so basically, yeah, your, your intuition about this is correct. Um, there definitely is a very strong, strong, strong connection here. Um, okay, we've got Page of Cups, we've got Ten of Cups, and we have the Star card. So these are good signs. Um, the Star card is about uh, hope. So there's a lot of hope for this situation. This card is about restoration. So, you know, if you're not in contact with this person or you have very little contact with this person, um, that is going to change eventually. Um, the timing is going to be different for all of you, um, but, you know, um, the page and the Ten of Cups here, this is like, I'm seeing these two cards as like fulfillment, you know, like like a, a sigh of relief, like, whew, finally, this, this has worked out, this has come together, this has wrapped itself up nicely and neatly, and I don't have to worry about this anymore. So, for some of you, this is going to be... Um, I want to say for a lot of you, this is probably going to come in the form of a union, okay, or reunion, okay? Um, so that's uh, something to look forward to, I guess. Um, I guess it depends on how you're feeling about your person right now. Um, but, you know, guys, it's going to be okay. It's just, you know, it just, it feels like major bullshit right now, but it's going to be okay. I promise. It just, you know, you just got to give it some time. Got to give it some time. You got to let this thing, you know, um, think of it like, think of this connection as like uh, its own, like, like an animal. You know, you have to, you have to give it room to breathe and um, grow, okay? And uh, if you, if you mess with it too much, it's, it's just going to cause delays, all right? Does that make sense, guys? Anyway, group one, the answer is yes. I think your intuition is very correct. I hope this reading resonated with you guys, and um, I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts. Um, yeah, I don't know. I never know how to end these things. Um, so yeah, I hope I see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye! Okay, group two. We've got Dalmatian Jasper. Let's see what your card is. Okay, we have Orphaned. This is number five. So, um, <clears throat> the Orphaned card is actually very similar to the uh, Five of Pentacles, at least from my perspective. It's, you know, it's, it's this sense of loss. It's um, uh, the feeling of not fitting in not belonging, it's, it's this feeling of uncertainty about 
where you're supposed to be, what, what your place is in this world, um, that kind of thing. So, also, when you're talking about relationships specifically, this card tends to talk about, like, looking for support and acceptance in people who cannot give it to you. Okay. So, um, I want to say that whoever you're thinking about right now may not be, um, who you think they are. You may be projecting onto this connection. Okay. Um, Let's see what other cards come out, though. Let's see. Let's use this deck. So, is group two correct? Um, is their intuition correct about the connection they are wanting to know about? King of Pentacles, Queen of Wands, Ace of Wands. So, I get the sense that you guys are really looking for stability. With the King of Pentacles here, you're looking for something very stable. You're looking for something that is going to give you um, a sense of belonging. Someone that is going to make you feel safe and give you the things that you need, right? Um, that's understandable. That's what everybody wants. However, um, well, back up. Let me Let me pull some more cards. Let me get some clarifiers here. Um, that is too many. With the Queen of Wands and the Ace of Wands here, I get the sense that a lot of you guys are very hopeful. Um, a lot of you guys are very uh, passionate about finding, you know, the right person for you. And I feel like, you know, some of you, when you, when you meet somebody new you get very excited and very um hopeful that you know this could be this could be the person that i've been looking for and and that's okay however um ew, yeah it seems like maybe mm, yeah some of you guys you're um like i said you're you're looking for these things in the wrong people um and what i i mean like Okay, this is gonna, this might sound a little bit harsh, so like, don't get mad at me, but this is what they're telling me. Some of you guys just give any old person a chance, um, and you kind of, you kind of have to stop doing that, um, because it's, it's not, like, it's not getting you anywhere, you know what I'm saying? And, um, but like, I think your mentality is, but anybody could be the one. But the thing is, I mean... You know, how has that um, strategy worked out for you so far? You know, think about that. Um, <laughs> because I just, I'm just seeing that a lot of you guys have just kind of had, you know, disappointment after disappointment. Okay. Um, you get very excited. You meet someone new, you get very excited. Um, but then they, maybe they end up showing their true colors or something like that. Something happens that causes a rift between the two of you and then you just end up being disappointed again and feeling like, you know, well, oh, fuck it. Um, that didn't work out the way I was hoping. So, to answer the question, is your intuition about this person or about this connection correct? Is this the real deal? I want to say no, unfortunately. It seems to me like whoever it is that you're thinking about is another of those disappointments. Um, now, that's not to say that you should like break up with this person or anything but um if you're thinking that this person is like 
a, your soulmate or the, you know, something like that. I, I don't think that, uh, I don't think that is accurate, okay, um, unfortunately. Because um, like I was saying at the start, it seems to me like, I just get this feeling like a lot of you guys project. You project things onto people. Um, Ace of Cups fell out. Ace of Cups is a new, a new beginning. So, okay. <laughs> I'm really seeing this as kind of a... This up here is a progression. Um, these cards down here are kind of like advice for you. That's, that's too many. Can I just get one more? Can I just get one more? <laughs> Can I get a card, please? Okay. And the Hierophant. Yeah. yeah, like I said, you're looking for stability. You're looking for somebody who's going to give you commitment, who's going to give you the things that you want to have. But um, you are, like I said, looking for that in the wrong places. Um, so I think in order to find that, in order to have... In order to find a connection that's going to be different, um, I think what you guys really should think about doing is um, kind of stepping away a little bit. Um, maybe, you know, maybe take a break from dating <laughs> if you're single. I, because the Three of Cups is about friendships, right? Um, so, I don't know, hang with your friends more often. You know, focus on building your friendships. You know, friendship is, friendships are really beautiful things, and I think a lot of people discount friendship. Um, a lot of people think that friendship is less than romance, a romantic relationship, which is just not true. Um, I think that's a really bullshit way of thinking. I think it really devalues what friendship is, the connections that f friends can have with each other. Um... You know, because, like, I have I have a couple of friends that are so important to me. Um, and if I had to choose between my best friend and somebody that I just started dating, I would definitely choose my best friend because, you know, <laughs> the connection that we have is very important to me and it's very strong. And, you know, somebody that I'm dating, unless I feel a connection that is equally intense or stronger, you know, they don't have a chance, <laughs> okay? Um, anyway, that's just me. That's my personal opinion. Um, so, yeah, this is, uh, this is what I'm seeing. I think if you, if you, um, step back a little bit, take a little bit of a break, you know, sort of reevaluate um, what you're looking for. You know, make sure that you are on the lookout for the right things. You know, make sure that the um, the the standards or the requirements that you have in place are still relevant. You know, make sure that they are still things that are important to you. Because um, you know, some people don't. Um, some people just keep operating, you know, with those same standards year after year after year, and they don't really take time to reevaluate, you know, if, if anything, like, what's changed, you know, is there anything, is there anything different that I think would be more important in a partner uh, now versus a couple of years ago, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I think if you do that, then I think that the thing you're looking for is going to come to you, okay? Um, so, guys, sorry that this reading ended up being a little bit uh, sad. Well, maybe maybe not sad, but, um, you know, I always hate to be, like, the bearer of bad news, but, you know, maybe some of you were uh, hoping to hear that this was not anything major. I don't know. I don't know why y'all. I don't know why y'all watch me. To be honest. <laughs> so, um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I hope I see you next time. We're gonna move on now to group number three, which was Opalite.
So let's see what your card is. We have breathe. Okay, so this card is about uh, manifestation. This card is about, you know, kind of, um, it's kind of about rest. It's kind of about taking a step back, you know, and having patience. It's about uh, meditation, trusting in the universe, surrendering to, you know, divine timing, that kind of thing. Um, so, all right, let's pull some more cards and see if your intuition about your connection is correct. Is this the real deal? Is this legit? Let's see. Whoa. We have the world card. So the world card is about cycles. It's about movement. It can be about travel. Um, so right away with just these two cards, okay, there's the six of wands. Right away with just with the, just these two first cards, um, I feel as though there is some element of divine guidance here going on. Okay, so um, if you are feeling like the person you're asking about is, you know, if you feel like you have some sort of soul connection, then I think that's probably true because of this aspect of um, divine guidance that I feel is happening here. I don't know why I keep dropping cards. Um, the Six of Wands is about victory. It's about success. It's about recognition. So, um, I think you're, you're hoping that your connection with this person can be recognized um, for what it is. Okay, we also have Temperance and we have the High Priestess. So, yeah, I want to say the answer to your question is yes. Your intuition is probably correct. If you are feeling like this is a soulmate um, or something like that, yes. Because we just have all these cards that are, that, that tend to come up when that is the case, okay? Um, temperance, this card is also, this card is also about having patience. This card is about... Uh, renewal, um, healing, that kind of thing. And then the High Priestess, again, is a very spiritual card. Um, she dabbles in the unknown, you know, kind of the, that uh, esoteric, like, woo stuff, that kind of thing. Um, she definitely is an indication of a soul connection. We have the Five of Cups, and we have the Nine of Pentacles. So, there is some grief pertaining to this situation or surrounding this situation. Um, some of you guys may be focused a lot on what has gone wrong with this person rather than what has gone right. Does that make sense? Uh, because, you know, this person is standing here staring at these three overturned cups, but they still have two more cups that are upright behind them, but they're not looking at that. They're fixated on what's gone wrong. Um, so I, I feel like a lot of you guys who picked this group probably are... Um, you're probably not in a relationship with the person you're asking about. You probably don't have very much contact with the person you're asking about. Um, because the Nine of Pentacles being here, this card is like single and mingling, that kind of thing. Um, it's about independence, you know. I, I, I see this card usually as somebody who is single and really embracing that, really appreciating that time. Um, although I'm not sure how much... Some of you are appreciating it. Um, some of you guys are really focused on the fact that your person is not in your life the way that you would like them to be. And but but you're focused on that when you could be focused on the positive side, which is the fact that you have a very special connection to this person that is very unique and something that. Um, many people never experience in their life, okay? Like, you know, these kinds of intense soul connections are, they're both a blessing and a curse, okay? 
Um, they're a curse in the fact that a lot of times they're kind of rocky, you know, and um, they they tend to prompt, you know, kind of unpleasant uh, things inside of us, right? Um, growth periods and uh, that kind of thing. But it's also, you know, once two people like this are aligned, like, they can come together and they can be, like, an unstoppable force. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, some of you are really focused on the fact that this person is not in your life the way you want them to be right now. But, you know, the, the really important thing is, like, the connection that you have with them. Um, the psychic, the uh, energetic connection, that kind of thing. So... You know, focus on that. Do your best to think about that and, and not think about the their physical absence, okay? Um, because, you know, that's not really, that's not doing you any good. Um, and I think that a lot of people don't know how to fully appreciate the, the 5D connections that they have with people. You know what I'm saying? Many people don't appreciate that, um, even though that is really the defining characteristic, right, of these types of relationships, like, that's what makes it so different, um, so, yeah, you know, if you miss your person, then, you know, just, you can, you can talk to them, just meditate and, and go under for a few minutes and, and let them, let them come to you. I'm having uh, pineapple and orange juice. It's very good. It would be better with um, some rum in it, though. Anyway. So, let's see what else we have here. The Queen of Pentacles. Yeah, the Queen of Pentacles is like the Nine of Pentacles uh, magnified. So, you know, she's very independent. She's very stable. She has a lot of... Um, she pretty much has everything she wants. You know, she, um, or, or everything she needs, I should say. Um, she, uh, she doesn't need anything or anyone to be happy. Um, anybody that comes into her life, that she accepts into her life, she does it because she wants to, not because she needs them, okay? Um, we also have the Four of Swords. So the Four of Swords is about a period of rest, okay, it's like a, it's like the pause button, um, it's about reflection, okay. So, I, I think what they're saying to you guys is that you have to, um, like I was saying, learn to appreciate the things that make this connection unique. Um, the things that really set this apart from any other connection you've ever experienced before. We also have the Sun card that fell out. Um, so the Sun card is, I, I always say this, but this is literally the best card in the deck. I mean, it is. It's like, what could possibly go wrong when the Sun card is sitting here? Um, so, you know, there's not really anything for you to be worried about. Like, this is a person that is going to be with you always whether you want it or not, <laughs> um, so, we, uh, you don't have to be worried about never seeing them again or never speaking to them again, because in reality, I think most of you guys are capable of speaking to this person, seeing this person whenever you want. Maybe, you might just not know how, okay? Um, but, like, if you really do have a soul connection that is as intense as this feels, you can do that. They're always with you. They're always with you. Okay? Um, it feels, this, this, this spread feels a lot like group one, except group one was a little bit more, I want to say they were a little bit further along the path, like, of acceptance, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, Group one's energy was more like, okay, this thing is happening, I've accepted it, I'm kind of over it, but I'm not really worried about it, that kind of thing. Um, 
you guys in this group feel more like you are concerned about it. You are concerned about how it's going to play out. You don't need to be. Um, embrace this time that you have uh, to be alone. You know, to, to really do some introspection and take care of yourself and, you know, all that good stuff. And, and just do what you want to do. All right, you guys. So, group number three, that is your reading. I hope that you enjoyed this one, and I hope that it resonates with you. Feel free to leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts. I do love to hear from you guys. I'm always interested in, you know, how um, the readings uh, apply to your situations. So, um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. I hope I see you next time. We're going to do our final group now, which was number four, Bloodstone. And your card is a message in a bottle, number 15, which reduces down to six. So if either of those numbers are significant to you, that could be a sign that this is indeed your reading. So this card is about communication. Um, it is also about... It's also about being receptive to messages um, from spirit, okay? So, this could go either way at this point. Um, let me pull some more cards. All right. Is group four's intuition about their connection correct? Is group four's intuition correct about this connection? There's the Ace of Pentacles. Ace of Pentacles is about a new beginning established um, based on stability and security. We have the Empress. We have the Three of Swords. So, um, Three of Swords is really about betrayal. It's about, it can indicate third party situations, but I, I don't really like to talk about that unless I really feel like it's applicable because some people like freak out and they're like, oh my god, a third party. Even though a third party doesn't have to be another person. Um, let's get some clarifiers, please. Can I get a clarifier for the Ace of Pentacles? The Magician and the Nine of Cups. Can I get a clarifier? Okay. The Five of Cups. And why is the Three of Swords here? Why is the Three of Swords here? Okay. There, there is the Ace of Cups. Okay. Guys. Hmm. There's definitely some shit that's gone wrong here. Um, hmm. You guys, all the other readings today were pretty straightforward. I, I could get, I got a pretty clear answer um, pretty quickly. But you guys, it's always the last reading that is the most difficult for some reason. I don't know why. Hmm. I need some, I need some assistance here. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Okay. Bear with me, y'all. I hate these guys sometimes. Um, yes, look for a sign that um, that's what you're doing by being here. That's very helpful. Very insightful, you guys. Yes, okay. Hey, what are you guys doing? 
What are you guys doing back there? Sorry, my animals are like going crazy. Um, <laughs> anyway, so um, the yes card did fall out. So it seems to me, I want to say yes, your intuition is probably correct. However, I, I don't feel super confident saying that. Um, although we do have the magician card here, which is about manifestation. And, you know, usually um, soul connections uh, are manifested into our lives um, for specific purposes. You know, this could be... The person that you're asking about could be a karmic partner or something um, because, gosh, I don't know. Because with the Ace of Cups here, oh, 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 okay. The, the two aces were kind of throwing me off. I feel like a lot of you guys who picked this group, maybe um, this is somebody that you were with for a while and then things kind of broke apart and then you kind of got back together and maybe now things are starting to not look so great again. Um, so you're wondering like, is this the real deal? Is this the person I'm supposed to be with? Or, you know, is this something I should fight for? I don't know. So, um, okay. You guys, this person seems like somebody that really looked good to you at first. Um, somebody that really treated you well, which is good, okay? But then something happened, something happened, um, could have been a third party situation. If there was a third party, I feel like it's already over with, it's already done and happened, <laughs> done, done and happened. Um, yeah, the five of cups, there's definitely been a lot of grief and um, heartache surrounding this uh, situation, um, especially on your end. Um, and, and some of you, it feels like you, you're not sure that your person feels any remorse for the things that they've done. Um, and I'm not sure that they do either, to be honest. I'm not really feeling that. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I said a few minutes ago that this feels like a a karmic situation. I think that's probably the case for a lot of you guys. Um, if that is the case, I think you probably already know that or you've already suspected that. Okay. So, hmm. but, but I think you were, many of you were hoping that that wasn't the case. Um, because, you know, karmic situations are never easy and, a lot of times they don't work out long term. You know, you uh, you learn whatever you're supposed to learn from the person and then you kind of go your separate ways. Um, but like this card being about being receptive to the universe's message. Um, maybe you haven't you haven't been receptive to it because um, I feel like you know, you've been getting signs or little inklings that, you know, about the reality of this situation that maybe you've kind of been ignoring or choosing to interpret differently. <laughs> um, so I would say, I would say you guys already know, you know, deep down, you know, um, in your gut, the, what it is, what's going on here, but many of you, I think, have been reluctant to accept that, okay? Um, but basically, you know, your intuition, which is telling you that this is not exactly something that's supposed to be 
forever. Okay, hold on. Let me back up. A lot of you guys, your intuition maybe has been telling you that this is a person that you have to let go of. If that's the case, the answer is yes. You're, that's correct. Okay. Unfortunately. Um, let's see. Let's pull some more cards. What else do we need to know? The Two of Cups. We have Judgment and we have the Four of Swords. Okay, so the Two of Cups is about soul connections, it is about union, it is about partnerships. Interesting, now they're throwing me off a little bit. We have Judgment, which is about awakening. So this would go along with the karmic thing because, you know, um, when we meet when we meet a karmic partner, um, we're supposed to learn a lesson from them. Um, so sometimes, you know, that does prompt us to have some sort of awakening, okay, so that we can learn whatever the lesson is for us to learn. We also have the Four of Swords, which is about contemplation, reflection, going within um, to think about stuff. So um, I think that is kind of like what you are meant to be doing right now or this is you know like your advice like okay you gotta um take a step back for a minute and uh think about this um you know what what is the what is it that you can learn from this what is it that you can take away from this situation that will help you in the future um yes for some of you, this is not a karmic situation. For some of you, I do feel like this is probably like a twin flamey kind of thing because this card is here, which, you know, twin flames also prompt some sort of spiritual growth or evolution. Um, so, you know, it's similar. The difference is that uh, a karmic connection once the karma is cleared and once the lesson is learned, a lot of times it just kind of fizzles out, right? Where that's not really the case with, tw that's not the case at all with Twin Flames. Um, so, yeah, I think that the reason, okay, the reason why this reading is difficult is because there's different things going on for different people here. Some of you guys are dealing with twins. Some of you guys are dealing with karmic partners. And I feel like you already know which one of those things you're dealing with. Okay? Um, and if you're not sure, shut your eyes for a minute and um, listen to your intuition. Okay? Because it, it knows. Like, you already know in your gut what's happening here, I think. Okay, guys? So, um, yeah, that's all I got for you, group four. I hope this reading resonates with you, and I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm sorry that it was a little bit um, all over the place, but like I said, something about the last readings um, usually are, they're just usually more complicated than the others, and I don't know why. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope I see you guys next time. Bye.